Hi everyone, this is Johnny O'Nose, and this is my Let's Game video for the game Soul Trader. Now, uh, this build that I've been playing on for, with Soul Trader was the one that was released on June 11, 2016. Now, my Let's Game videos are all a, kind of like a comprehensive video about, about the game. It should only last 10 or 15 minutes long. But I wanted to just let you know about these really cool games that I've been playing that uh, you may not know about. I, I just happened to stumble upon them with Steam, and Steam knows that I really like uh, these niche games that, you know, not the AAA games, I, I love these little indie games that uh, people are making all over the place. Uh, Soul Trader really drew me in uh, with its promise of really focusing on relationships in a game. Now I'm a big uh, Crusader Kings player. Um, I love like the Roman uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms games, where there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, perception and a lot of like um, uh, relationships in that game as well. But this is the first game to kind of mix my two favorite genres together, which is like a relationship game with uh, you know pew pew space time <laughs> sci-fi sci-fi ness, uh, and this game really delivers on that aspect in terms of it's it's really amazing that a game is is really focusing on perception, which is funny because in the workplace in real life, um, I've had a couple managers tell me that perception is reality. If you're perceived of, of doing a good job, then uh, you're apparently doing a good job. <laughs> so, um, not that I 100% agree with that that statement, but at the same time, though, it's extremely important that your perception is important. Uh, sorry, that your perception is the way that you would hope that you're being perceived. So this game takes that whole idea and wraps it into a, a, a neat little bow where when you look at somebody, there is a, kind of like a perception meter. Like, I may not be loyal to the old federation. I may just want to seem loyal because I want to become president. That's the In this game, there are goals that you can pick to accomplish. Um, there's goals like becoming president, there's like uh, you know, getting a ton of money, I think it's like 200k, uh, which I would have accomplished already in this particular game. Um, and there's explore the whole galaxy, um, the whole uh, solar system, and uh, other goals such as that. Uh, one of the interesting, more interesting ones that I would like to try out later um, would be to become a pirate chief. That sounds like a lot of fun too. Um, so this game... Uh, has um, all the different planets you would expect in the um, soul system. So it's got you know Earth, Venus, Mercury, and all the others that I'm not going to list out. Um, you fly around in kind of a uh, Star Control uh, Space Rangers esque type of type of way. Uh, it's got a cool reverse mechanic that I like a lot that I haven't seen in any other game where it actually just reverses your trajectory rather than going backwards. So if I, I'm just hitting the back button right now. So if my trajectory is moving to the right, if I hold down back, I start heading left, which I think is kind of neat. It's got your uh, your basic uh, pew pew model of um, like it looks like I have uh, someone that's against me here. So if I wanted to go and kill this person, yeah, it looks like this person is going to try to shoot me because I, I I know this by uh, seeing this with the red name here. So I don't know if this person even has any guns to shoot me with. Oh, she does. But uh, every ship that you see floating around is of uh, there's a person in there that you can interact with. Um, this person is actually a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. So I'm surprised that she's willing to shoot me. The other really cool thing about this game is that all the characters are pre-generated, just as you would expect from a uh, dwarf fortress, where it generates a certain amount of time. I think it's like 2,000 years in Dwarf Fortress. In this game, it's like 200 years of all of these characters playing the game that you would be. So every game is a different game. Like some places have bars um, in one seed. Uh, in another seed, it, they could have like a bunch of factories. So if you memorize the map, it's good to know where all the planets are at. But each planet is going to be a little bit different every time you play. So there's a lot of replay value as well. Um, along with the different goals you can go after. So one one game you could be going after president, the other one for money. Um, let's see. Uh, 
The flight mechanics are great. Uh, I, I really like the visa system that kind of restricts the map to you. Um, it has the general, the, the basic general um, fare of space travel where you have a system and then you jump to, or you jump over to a gate and then the gate takes you to a different part of the system. So this is an example of me flying over to Mars. And then I can go land at Mars that has a city on there. So there, there, there's cities, there's planets, and within the cities you can um, leave your ship. Uh, you can see all the different locations within the planet. And as I was saying, some will have bars, some of them will have factories, there's even shipyards to buy, to buy different types of ships. There is, uh, at this moment in time, I think uh, five or six different ships. There's the Lynx, which is your light fighter. The, what is this one called? I always forget it, because I've never bought it. The Ocelot, which is your medium fighter. The ship that I have is called a Cougar, which is your heavy fighter. And then you have your transport ships, the Tiger and the Big Tiger. Uh, there's a very unique system uh, involved with ships in this game. Most of the time you start off with just a thousand bucks in your pocket. Um, so you don't own your own ship. It's a really great way of being able to introduce some restrictions without making you feel so restricted you can't do anything. So those are all um, a lot of the strong positives um, of the game, especially the, the relationships. The, the relationships piece of this game is, is completely unique in my opinion. I haven't seen another game that, that really takes relationships to the level of a game like this. And in the relationships, you have both kind of a friendship level, which indicates uh, whether or not someone will agree to you on something. So if you don't have a ship and you know a person that has a really cool ship, um, and you're really good friends with them, and you ask to borrow it, they'll actually let you borrow your, their ship. You won't be able to do any upgrades to it or anything like that, but you will have a ship that you don't have to pay for. Um, and in this current build of the game, you don't even have to return the ship to them. They'll just give you their ship. So there's the friendship levels, which allow for certain things to occur. And then there is um, the attributes that are perceived by other people based off of your actions. And you can see all the actions that I shared with this person here, along with all the pluses and minuses. And you can also, the, the things you say can affect you, as well as the person you're talking about. So in this case, I shared the fact that I am now f friends with this senator, to another senator, and because of that, um, she because she knows that Weldon is is a scoundrel. His his morality is really low. Um, her her perception of of his morality went down, but because I'm friends with him now, she's like, oh well, if they're friends, then that means that they're both scoundrels. So I lost some morality with her as well. The funniest part is is that I purposely lowered my morality with this character. So that I can get favor, I, I can do some missions with her. Because she was like, "You need to be a scoundrel. You need to be this, this, and this to be able to get jobs for me." So I did it on purpose. If you're really smart about what information you give people, uh, things really seem to fall into place really well. If you're kind of willy-nilly and just giving news to people, you can kind of dig yourself into the dirt. Because there's a lot of people on my people list that, if you're not careful, like a lot of people at the Senate um, are immoral, unreliable. So every time you share the fact that you're friends with this person, you um, you then get a little of their attributes melt melted into your perception as well. I know it's really confusing, but that's why I love this game. Really, um, the whole perception and friendship thing uh, and relationship thing is is extremely strong. Now uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of the weaknesses that I see in the game. Uh, you do have the ability of getting yourself uh, a job. Now, I'm, I'm a political assist assistant in this game. Uh, the jobs right now, um, really, like I said, this build was released on June 11th. I would imagine within the next couple weeks uh, this will be fixed or um, enhanced. But um, when I get a job, really all it does is it kind of opens up the first level of friendship with all my coworkers, and that's about it. Um, I'd really like to be able to see uh, you have the ability to do things with your jobs. Like if you're a, a banker, like maybe you can do some sort of uh, 
I don't know, an advertisement mission where you have to advertise your bank to people to get them to come. And if they do come, they get a discount of 10%. I, I don't know, but uh, I'm not a designer. Uh, but it would be nice to actually be able to do something with the jobs that you get. Like I said, right now, all they do is they open up certain uh, conversations with people that you wouldn't be able to get uh, if you weren't their coworker. So as I was saying before, there are favors that you can get from people um, that unlock based off of your attributes, based off of your current job. And uh, if you don't have those, uh, then you're restricted from getting favors from that person or, or doing favors for that person. Um, the other thing that, that feels a little weak in this game is uh, like it's, it's a little easy to get money in this game. Um, the mining is a little OP right now. Um, like I just I spent maybe four or five in-game days to collect to, to collect ore and sell it. Um, also, it doesn't feel like there's a lot to spend money on. Like you can you know you have your ship here that has all an assortment of different upgrades you can, you can upgrade the guns you can upgrade your engines as well as your hyperdrive and and cabin um, but other than that there's not a lot to spend money on it'd be really nice to be able to like maybe buy real estate or if you buy a house you can have parties there where people can you can invite your friends and then they'll invite their friends that'd be kind of a cool way to to do networking um, maybe buying a, uh, you know, building a factory, or you know, maybe the infrastructure of a particular planet has been harmed by something, some event, and you're there to help out. Um, uh, a really good game that does this well is, um, shoot, what is it called? Um, it's called Star Star Nomad 2. Or in Star Nomad 2, um, it has these events on each of the planets where you know there's a food shortage or there's a like a diamond so shortage and if if you bring in goods of the type that they need then you get a special bonus uh for helping that particular planet out it'd be really nice that be those dynamic events like that game in this one uh so the game itself like the foundation is 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 friggin amazing like the all the people all all the things all the inner workings of relationships and people going about their 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 daily like the for instance there's a, a a time within the day and you'll see that people they'll go to work at like nine o'clock in the morning and by like 5 p.m. they'll either go to their home I don't have anyone I don't have any friends on this planet but you can see that like this factory is now closed for the night so at 6 p.m. this place closed and this shipyard is empty but if I head on over to a bar, oh look, there's 41 people here because everyone is now sitting here socializing at the bar. So they have their own um, daily routines that they follow, and around nine o'clock they'll go home, and then around eleven o'clock they'll sleep. So these, these are all really important inf pieces of information for when you're trying to get some information on somebody. So like, if I need to talk to the president, I know she's going to be working hard during the day, and I'm not going to be able to talk to her. But if I hit if I hit the bar at seven o'clock, she might be there. Some really cool little aspects like that. But um, I'll continue on with the weaknesses. Uh, so, so the game just kind of has a feel of not being complete yet. I don't know if it's it's considered early access or, or just full release, but um, this game brings so much to the table, but there's there's not much to do with it. Like, you can fly around, you can mine, you can do some trading. Um, there's, there's so much hidden potential here. I, I would still highly recommend the game based off of the potential that the game shows as well as how hardworking the dev is. Now Chris Parsons, the dev for this this game, has been putting out a patch every single day since it's been released. He's been looking at the Steam forums for all the bugs that people are putting in and, and fixing them at like light speed. It's 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 really it's really phenomenal how much work he's put into it. So many games like this get thrown out into the wind and like forgotten. There's a bunch of bugs and nothing happens. This guy is really making sure this game is is really going to um, hit its potential, you know, within the next couple months or so. Um, but yeah, jobs jobs doesn't feel really fleshed out. Um, spending money on things doesn't really feel fleshed out. Like seriously, like as soon as I bought this ship and I upgraded it, I really don't have anything to spend money on other than repairing it. Or maybe spending fifty dollars here or there for a place to stay for the night. Um, 
let's see what else can I say about this game uh, the AI um, like there's not a lot of combat in it so if you're going into this type of game thinking that it's gonna be like a Star Control 2 or a Space Rangers um, there really is very little need to um, to have combat happen in this game like if you go out and kill somebody there's some pretty negative connotations for taking somebody out every every friend of that person is gonna hate you um, you're going to be seen as, you know, low morality um, or, you know, or crazy. Let's see if I can find someone on my list so I can show you the different attributes. Um, yeah, and uh, so it, this is not a game that you're going to jump into and go, oh, I'm going to pew pew everyone and they're all going to die and I'm going to win the game. It's, it's just not the point of this game. It's all about building these relationships. The other part, and unfortunately this is the biggest piece of uh, negative feedback that I can give about the game is the whole um, conversation system. Now there's been a lot of um, back and forth with the dev on the Steam forums about hey gosh I can't talk to anybody, the, the list keeps moving, about this way that you give information to people and I, I, I love the way it works uh, it just tends to like using it tends to be kinda cumbersome um, each one of the piece of information that you have about people is broken down into these different colors of intensity and you're trying to be really careful like this person I don't know them very well they somehow they know that I'm friends with Senator Travel uh, and that was another cool part is that the information you give gets passed around between friends and if, if you're not careful some bad information about you can spread throughout the whole universe and everyone will hate you about for it so you gotta be careful about what information you give but the giving of the information is extremely cumbersome um, reds do some you know reds do some really good things wow interesting I am surprised that, that happened oh I clicked on something I didn't mean to click but as you can see, I've, I've really tanked my morality with this person because I, I told her that I am friends with this Amelia Ratcliffe person. Um, but let's just say um, I want to raise my influence and wealth. So in this list here, I've got some stories that I can tell this person about how I've purchased a lot of spaceships, which uh, gives the perception of uh, the fact that you're wealthy and you're influential. Now to find those, you really just kind of have to scroll through a lot of these entries, and it's it's pretty tough because you just you're just sitting here scrolling. You have to read and like, oh, here we go. There's there's the one that I'm looking for, um, and it. If you had to do this one or two times, it wouldn't be a problem. But you gotta do this with everyone you talk to. So the whole conversation piece is. It, while it's powerful if you've got it down this is really overwhelming when you first look at it you're like which ones you know like, like I told my wife when I was playing this I'm like I'm just pushing buttons I have no idea what I'm doing it took me a pretty good amount of time to figure out what exactly these colors mean what exactly these attributes do for you each of the jobs requires you to have different uh, different um, different attributes so you don't it's really hard to figure out what you want to do right off the bat but even with the negatives of this game, I think this is this game has phenomenal potential of being a game that can be really relaxing and kind of really get you immersed in a world of these people that are flying around doing trading, doing pirating, and all that stuff. It it feels like a like more of like a a Drox operative type game where you're not the star, you just happen to be one of many stars within the game. That sounds cheesy, but but yeah, you just happen to be one of many people in the game that are striving for the same goals. So you don't feel like, um, very much like Mountain Blade is like when you start the game, you're just a guy with a bunch of peasants fighting for you. And at the end of the game, you're, you're a king and you can control everything. This game has that same feeling from the, the rags to riches type of uh, immersion which I, I personally really enjoy in games so that's my let's game video for soul trader uh, if you have any questions about the game please go ahead and take a look for any of the uh, let's play or let's learn videos that I have on this game and uh, go ahead and put some comments down and I'll be sure to answer with you answer you as well as if you need something specifically shown I can go ahead and create a video that will hopefully answer your questions so thanks so much for watching. This is Johnny O'Knows playing Soul Trader.